Hi, Jochen Schloff from Inner Space Explorers. After the last video, I received uh, quite a few questions from people that ask why we do this curve building and especially why we have to, to extend the decompression stops on the way up. So why are the shallow stops longer than the deep stops or the deeper stops? And um, I would just like to give you a very unscientific but very logical explanation of that. And um, so think about it like this. This is our body. Um, and this is our lung. And obviously there is a connection between the lung and the outside. So normally when we are when we're standing here, we have one bar on the outside, and obviously we have one bar on the inside as we have this connection. And let's say we have one bar of pressure inside our body, otherwise we would be either crushed or explode. And um, so now what happens when we dive is that we increase the pressure here. So just to, to make it simple here, let's say we go to 90 meters, that means 10 bars. Just makes it easy for me on the board. So now we have 10 bars on the outside and obviously we have 10 bars on the inside and what happens is that gas starts to travel into our body, into our tissues. And theoretically, and, and obviously we know that this is uh, taking place in a lot of different tissues at a lot of different speed rates and so on and so on. And so on. Pretty complicated um, process, but just very, very simplified, that's what's going to happen. And theoretically that goes on till we reach 10 bars here, then we reach full saturation, which is not the case in sport diving and normally also not the case in most techni technical diving um, applications. So. Now, when we start to ascend, obviously we reduce the pressure here and we reduce the pressure here. I just want to do this with my fingers all the time. So let's say let's say you have a buoyancy issue and you pop up to. 20 meters, so suddenly you have only three bars here and 10 bars here, so that explains why you go to the chamber, because a lot of gas, I mean, the gases always have the tendency to equalize themselves, so that gas wants to go out here, there's very little pressure in the lungs and outside and a lot of pressure in the tissues, so this gas obviously wants to go out here with a lot of force and it, as it starts to expand, it will form a lot of bubbles. These bubbles can probably not pass the lung filter. And we have bubbles in the system cruising around, causing issues. But um, that's obviously not what we're going to do. So the question is, when does this off-gassing start? When does gas start to travel from the tissues back in the lungs and we bring it back out of the system? So basically, the moment we are below 10 here. So basically the moment we start to um, go back up. So in reality, and that's why we erase all of this, we don't reach we don't reach the 10 bars here, right? I mean, that, that's theoretical. When we reach 10 bars, we would have full saturation. So we said we have 10 bars here, we have 10 bars here. The pressure inside is 10 so the gas starts to travel into our tissues and let's say we reach seven bars here at some point of our dive now we decide let's go back up so now we already have the explanation why the ascent rate in the first portion of our ascent can be relatively fast so don't get me wrong we don't want you to rock it off the bottom but obviously it doesn't make a huge issue if you're a little bit faster because unless you go below 10 uh, below 7 here below 7 bars nothing will happen i mean unless you have less pressure in your lungs and outside of your body than you have in your tissues yeah no issue so it's also safe to say off gassing will start the moment we go below seven. So that is the point. And obviously the seven is just a number I picked random. Um, if you just do a small do a bounce dive, I mean, we've, we talked about 90 meters, 10 bars. So if you go to 90 meters, just go down, 
see it go back up, you will not reach 70 new tissues. I mean, that's when you're probably still in a no decompression dive. And that's also the reason why a lot of people get bent or got bent in the past. They figured out this concept, they get training somewhere, they do these bounce dives, but then they put deco on it like they have a lot of bottom time. And then obviously they start on gassing while they do their deep decompression, which is probably unnecessary. Um, so probably only reached three or something and um, so don't want to confuse you but the seven is picked randomly it really depends on how long do you stay at what depth and um, because obviously over time the longer you stay in the depth the more gas will travel into your tissues and the more saturation you will you will have so now you're below seven off gassing starts and then now you can can think about all the deep stops and all these theories. I start, the, the deep stop idea is that you start to off gas early because if the, the higher the difference between these two numbers, if let's say I go to three here now, again, I have a bigger uh, pressure difference, so I have more off gassing. I'm off gassing in a more aggressive way and the possibility of bubbles forming is higher. That's how people came up with the idea of the, the deep stop. The deeper I start, the less pressure difference, the less issues. And if I reach, let's say, four here, making my way up, I always keep the pressure difference small and that way I have a more safe and more efficient decompression. But I don't want to really go into that, into that deep st uh, stop uh, stuff. I just want to answer the question on this um, on this ascent curve and why it gets more shallow on the way up because if you look at it as a, as a curve let's make that just another color we said we can we can start relatively fast and then at a certain point I mean when we reach um, the point where we start to off gas obviously we want to slow down and then the higher we go in the water column the more shallow that curve Gets. So why is that? Well, first of all, first of all, I mean that part is covered. We said it doesn't really matter because we do not off gas in the first part of our ascent. And then obviously, I mean, no matter what strategy you follow, you start decompression, so you slow down your curve. You won't allow your body to off gas, but then at some point you start to shallow that curve, and the explanation is pretty simple. First of all, in that deeper part of your decompression, you're decompressing your fast tissues. So that's the tissues that take on gas very fast and they off gas it very fast. And that's also the tissues that are responsible for bad decompression sickness type 2, etc. So when you go towards the shallower part of your decompression, you start decompressing, decompressing the slower tissues and at the same time you um, have physics against you. So when you think about the surface, 10 meters and 20 meters, you double your pressure here. You have one bar on the surface, you have two bars at 10 meters and you have three bars at 20 meters. So when you come up from 20 to, to 10, you have only one third pressure difference. When you go up from 10 to zero, you have you half the, the pressure. So that means bubble growth between 20 and 10 is not as dramatic as from 10 to 0. So that's the reason why you want to slow down on the way up. You have your slow tissues that take more time to off gas, plus you have a higher pressure difference, though the, the gradient, the pressure difference between your lungs and your tissues is bigger with every meter you go to the surface. And that's especially also a reason why you want to be slow from your last decompression stop no matter if it's six or three meters to the surface because that's an area where you can really create bubbles and that's the last thing you want to do all right i hope that answered the questions if you have more questions and want to discuss this check out the patreon site otherwise please leave your comments and a thumbs up underneath this video and i'll see you next time thanks for watching